Welcome to drawing a human figure in profile. When you're drawing a human figure, you aren't always wanting to have a person who is facing full on to you as we did in the uh, basic human figure, or say as in that figure right there. Sometimes you want that person to be turned to the side, as this woman is. Well, when you turn the human figure to the side, all those shapes and proportions that you used before, uh, they change. Some of them rather drastically. So I want to give you a quick lesson in how to have a basic way to draw the human figure in profile, that is, turn to the side. So let's get started on that now. We're going to pretty much go through the same uh, procedure that we did when we were drawing the human figure in our first lesson, but I'm going to show you what the changes are as we go along. First of all, we're going to draw the head. Once again, we're going to start at the top of the page. We're going to draw an oval for the head. But uh, you might consider drawing a shape for the oval that is somewhat like the shape that you would uh, draw for a profile in one of our portraits lessons. Then we're going to put the neck on. Now, when we drew the human figure before, we pretty much stuck the neck right underneath the head. But we, we, what we want to do here is we want to back this off a little bit so that this person has a little bit of chin here. Remember, we're looking at them from the side. So we want to see their chin come in and then the front of their neck. And then we'll draw the back of their neck wherever it looks like that neck should be thick enough to hold that head up. This, again, is the same thing we did when we were drawing a profile. So if you aren't sure what I'm talking about, you might want to check out that lesson first. So there's our neck. Next, we would draw our shoulders. But when you're looking at a person from the side, you don't see their shoulders going out to the side like this because their shoulders are pointed toward you. So really, when it comes down to it, when we're drawing the uh, human figure and profile, we skip over the shoulders. You'll see why. Next, we go to the torso. And the torso is going to come right off the neck here. It's the same shape we had before, kind of an oval shape. One thing you should notice right off is that the torso looks much thinner side to side than it did when we were drawing the, uh, the figure as it was facing out to you. Because when the figure was facing out to you, it had these wide shoulders going out to the side, and then the torso was built off of those. So it was nearly twice as wide as it seems here. Now we have the waist down here, and then we're going to draw the hips, rectangle, oval, trapezoid, whatever makes it work best for you. And you'll notice that they are also, the hips are also much more narrow than they seemed when you were drawing a uh, figure from the front. Now comes the part that people most readily mess up on. We're going to draw the legs. Now the legs are built pretty much the same way as they were in our frontal figure. It's, they come in two parts and each part is straight, the upper leg and the lower leg. But here's the trick. When we were drawing the figure frontally, we divided that hip area in half, put one leg over here, another leg over here, and they kind of met in the middle. Well, that doesn't happen in profile because this leg is going to fill the entire space of those hips. The reason being is because you don't have one leg beside the other now. You have one leg near you and the other leg is on the other side of the body from you. So we have the upper leg going all the way from the front to the back of the hips down here to the knee. Then we have the lower leg coming off the knee. See, this is nothing different from what we did in the frontal figure. But now, we need that other leg on the other side of the body. The thing is, that other leg 
is going to be very much overlapped by the leg on this side of the body. So you're not going to be able to see all of that other leg. It starts here just like this leg on this side does. There's the knee. Then it comes up and it comes to the front of the hips. But see this leg here is in the way so you can't see all of that. So try to remember that you're going to be making this upper leg overlapped by this upper leg on the close side of the body. It's possible, depending on what the person is doing, that the lower leg may also be overlapped by the lower leg on this side of the body. It depends on what they're doing. In this case, the person has taken a step. So his lower leg is exposed because it's moving backwards from where the lower leg on this side is. So at this point, you have to make sure you keep foremost in your mind that you have a leg on this side of the body and a leg on the other side of the body and the leg on this side of the body is very likely to overlap that one. Then we have our feet. Alright, so now we have the legs. Now the arms have the same thing you have to remember for the legs. You have an arm on this side of the body and you have an arm on the other side of the body. Well, the arm on this side of the body isn't overlapping the arm on the other side of the body so much as the entire torso is overlapping the arm on the other side of the body. Here, this is what I mean. We're going to draw the upper arm and the lower arm just like we did when we were drawing a uh, frontal figure. Now, the problem is where do we start the upper arm? Because when we were drawing the frontal figure, we just started the upper arm at the end of the shoulder. But we can't really see the end of the shoulder here because it's facing us. So what we're gonna do is we'll go to the neck, go to the bottom of the neck, go a little bit below the bottom of the neck, right there in the middle. That's where your upper arm is gonna start. A little bit below the bottom of the neck in the middle of the body. So we draw that shape for our upper arm. See, it's set a little bit below the neck in the middle of the body. That's the upper arm. Remember, the upper arm should be long enough that this elbow can hit that person in the waist. Then we draw the lower arm connected into that elbow. And it will be about the same length as the upper arm. So we've got that arm. And we can put the hand on the end of it. The trapezoid. Four fingers coming out of the end of that hand. A thumb coming out of the side of the hand. Now we have to deal with the arm on the other side. It is possible you would not see that arm on the other side at all. It could be hanging down so that the body is totally covering it up, totally overlapping it. Or it could be the person is reaching forward or reaching back, and then that arm will become exposed. But the thing you have to remember is that arm on the other side starts the same place as this one. So even if that arm were stretching out in front of a person, it starts here, it'll be the same length. So that upper arm will look shorter you will see less of it. If you drew the upper arm on this side so it looked just like that one, it would have this weird look of growing out in the middle of the person's chest. So you have to remember that a fair portion of this upper arm is gonna be overlapped by the body. And then the lower arm and in the hand. I'm not spending a lot of time on these because um, nothing here changes from what we did with the uh, figure earlier. So there. That's how you put together the armature of the human figure in profile. As for clothes, muscles, that sort of thing, uh, nothing much has changed there. You're going to draw the clothes 
as you normally would. You have to think in terms of what are they wearing on the top part of their body. Uh, what's the collar of their shirt look like? How does their shirt hang on their body? Where does it hang off their body? How does it hang on their sleeves? Or on their arms? You have to remember to draw the entire portion of clothes. If you're going to make a shirt, you have to draw the entire thing. You cannot use any part of the body as a shirt. There's really nothing new here about the clothes. The only thing that changes when you're putting a person in profile, the only new information is how the shapes of the actual armature for the body are going to change because you're looking at them from a different direction. So there's that person in profile as a human figure. The muscles will not have any appreciable change in them either. You're just going to shape those arms and legs if you can see them so that they look like arms and not like a couple of popsicle sticks. And then erase your guidelines are, I should say, guidelines and the parts of this figure that you should not be able to see that are really exclusive to the armature. there I'm not liking it too much I need to go through and do some work on it okay there's the figure and profile